Hi, today we're going to be proving a particular linear system has infinite solutions. Okay, I'll take it from here. We're going to, we've been talking a little bit, well I've been talking a lot actually about this idea of linear systems and we need to be reminded again that here are the possibilities. When we're solving linear systems, we're asking our, the question that we're asking is how many times do our two lines touch? So it's possible our two lines do this. They have the same slope but different y-intercepts and if, this, if these lines look like they're ever going to meet, I apologize because they're meant to be parallel and in this case there are no solutions. Isn't that right? And we talked about what that might look like. And in a number of videos we talked about the idea that maybe we have these two lines and that at some point they, I don't know, maybe they meet like that, I guess. And we say in this case, these two lines, there's one solution. So one solution. The only other possibility is this. The possibility that we have two lines, let this be one of those lines. Remember that we're only in two dimensions, so Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton's uh, rule on two things not being able to be in the same place at the same time does not, does not uh, pertain to this. So it's possible we have this line sitting right on top of the other line exactly. And in this case, we have two lines in the same place at the same time. And th in this case, these lines have all solutions, right? They have infinite solutions. They meet everywhere. And these lines are called Cohen, I know it says Cohen, but it's Cohen, coinciding lines, coinciding lines. So we know these are the only three possibilities for linear systems. Linear, when we solve linear systems, we're saying, how many times do they meet? And if they do meet, where do they meet? First possibility is they don't meet at all. We have parallel lines. Second possibility is they meet one time. And the only other possibility, it's the one that we're going to look at right now, is that they're in the same place at the same time all the time. They have all shared solutions. So we're going to solve these two here. We've been through a lot of techniques for solving. I'm looking for opposites. 6x, the opposite of 6x would be negative 6x, and negative 15 is certainly not that. Maybe if we have opposites of y, we have negative 10y. Positive 25 is not the opposite of, of negative 10. The opposite of negative 10 is positive 10, so we don't have opposites there. So that leads us to the conclusion that we have to make some changes. And I think what we're going to do is this. I think we will... Uh, let's do this. What if I multiply this top one here? What if I multiply this? What if I multiply this equation, the whole thing up here, by five, and the one at the bottom? If I multiply the whole thing here by two, please stop the video for a second. Do this math. Remember, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all the way across, right? All the way across. I'm going to distribute completely across the equation. So I'm going to multiply it to here and to here and to here. Please stop the video just for a second and ask yourself. <clears throat> what am I eliminating? So take a second, do this math, and then come back, please. It's really worth your time. Let's see how that works out. Welcome back. Uh, when I did that, what I got was this. I multiplied this. I got 30x minus what's 50y. All right, 50y is equal to 60. That's me. That's the first equation. I just did this. Now I'm going to do the bottom equation, let's find something pretty, how about blue is real pretty, uh, 2 times negative 15x is negative 30x, dun, 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 dun. 2 times, this is 50, positive, fi ooh, that's interesting, isn't it, 50 is equal to negative 60, what in the world, so, when we do our elimination part, we're just going to add these together, we get 0, plus 0 equals 0, which is actually quite interesting, isn't it? Because we're going to ask ourselves this question. The question is this. <clears throat> when does 0 equal 0? And it sounds like a really, really dumb question, and therefore maybe I'm looking for some clever answer, but it's not a clever answer at all, because when does 0 equal 0? always equals zero, always equals zero. And if at the end you had gotten seven equals seven, 13 equals 13, you ask yourself that question, when does that equal that? 
And if you and if the numbers are equal to one another, then the answer if the answer is always, well, when do coinciding lines touch? They touch always. They are always in the same place at the same time. So that would be so in this case, right? So in one case, when you're answering, if you're looking for the solution for for linear systems, you'd say they the lines meet at the point three five or whatever that point is. In this case, you're not going to write that. You're going to say here, your answer here is that your answer here is that. You know what? Let's find a more interesting color. I'm sick of blue. About red. These are coinciding lines. Or you could write, or you could write infinite solutions. I've even seen people write all solutions. So we've covered our possibilities. I hope you took good notes. This is going to be worth it. These are things that we need to know. So good work. Are we still here together? Okay. See you soon.